as many of you who've been watching this channel already know, Tesla has some pretty significant advantages versus its competition. Now, experts are weighing in on what those advantages are and how they actually benefit the company. And actually, when you think about it, there are three big advantages that Tesla have over their current competition. Those three things might be too big for Legacy Auto to overcome. Hello, my friends. I'm the Electric Viking. Welcome to the channel. I'm coming to you here from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome all your new subscribers. Great to have you. Welcome back, everyone else. Tesla's leadership as king of electric vehicles has been established through several years of innovation and the company's ability to influence an entire industry, well, really has never been seen before. No one's ever done this before. The entire industry now has all decided to go electric. I mean, Washington's basically decided within the last 24 hours to ban internal combustion engine vehicles in 2030, it's game over for us. Now that more automakers have adopted plans for electric cars or go bankrupt because they have had no choice really, haven't they? It comes down to preparation according to Howard Yu, IMD Business School Lego Professor of Management and Innovation. He talked about some of the key structural advantages Tesla have which could potentially be insurmountable. I mean, when it comes to General Motors and Ford saying that one day they're going to overtake Tesla, whether that's a fantasy or a reality, well, I think if you consider these key structural advantages, it may just be a fantasy. You joined Yahoo Finance to discuss what is priming companies for the future. Tesla Rati reported that along with where they rank in terms of preparedness, you believes Tesla's recent performance in 2020 and 2021 have only solidified the company's recognition as a permanent king in the electric vehicle sector, which will one day be the only sector. While the past two years are key indicators of Tesla's clear ability to adapt to incredible hardships, including the COVID pandemic shutting down their factory, chip shortages, battery shortages, nickel price hikes, lithium price hikes, part shortages across the industry. However, these are indicative of the company's relevance to the future and its ability to outthink its legacy auto competitors. Tesla is in prime position to dominate over the next several years, especially in autonomy and chip building, he claims, simply because of what it has been able to accomplish over the past few years. I think he's got a good point. If you think about it, who has dealt with this situation the best? I mean, really, there's been two companies that have dealt with all these challenges the best. Those have been BYD and Tesla. Clearly, in terms of their sales, they've drastically increased sales. I mean, one of those transformed its business to being the largest electric vehicle company in the world and started to take away enormous market share from other players in China. I mean, for example, in China, Tesla Model Y just outsold the Toyota RAV4. That's a huge changing in the guard. Most impressive to you is Tesla's scrappy ability to navigate the global chip shortage. You asked the rhetorical question of how companies are going to be able to scale software capability and autonomy in the coming years. Skeptical of whether or not companies will be able to handle the evolution of software and its part in vehicles moving forward. And he makes a good point. I mean, we've heard of numerous challenges that Volkswagen faced. I mean, they're clearly the best place legacy auto company when it comes to EVs right now. But even they've admitted, even their CEO has admitted that Tesla's way ahead of them in terms of their production capabilities and in terms of their software capabilities as well. He said, so you talk about the automotive sector and of course, it's no longer just about building electric vehicles. These days, everybody can build electric vehicles. It's really this idea of how do you scale up the software capability, autonomous driving, as well as building chipsets around an electric component. Now you said, the late lead shortages of the global semiconductor sector really just exposed how important these new future capabilities are. And from that perspective, Tesla obviously ranks number one. And you're looking at Toyota. They have been able to stockpile in terms of chipsets until most recently because of their supply chain digitization. Even Toyota hasn't been able to deal with it. Tesla navigated the 2021 shortage by developing microcontroller variants internally. The developments helped the company avoid massive shortages in production. 
which halted every single other legacy automaker's manufacturing lines. Every one of them was affected. Now, Tesorati goes on to say, essentially the past two years have shown which companies are prepared for a new type of vehicle. And it is new. So if you're watching this channel and you think that, oh, it's just the same as making internal combustion engine vehicles, you've got a lot to learn. Please check out some of my 1,000 plus videos I've made over the past eight months. It's not that Simple, it doesn't work that way. As you mentioned, nearly every automotive company in the world has announced plans for electrification, but bringing those products to market is proving to be increasingly difficult. Just look at Rivian and Lucid, how hard they're finding it to mass produce EVs. Look at how hard GM is finding it right now. Look at how hard really every legacy auto company is finding it. It's not easy. Tesla's ability to fend off competition and really establish itself as a leader for so many years Continuing to improve on an already industry leading product is what is most impressive to you. If you miss a product life cycle, then you are really in a precarious position. If you miss twice or you miss it three times, then you're sent home packing bankrupt. What you've been seeing is an organization that can stay on top of competition in this particular sector are the ones who are very entrepreneurial. They're lean, right? They're efficient. They can pivot. They can change quickly. Does Legacy Auto do that? No. I mean, for example, Jim Farley, clearly he's creating a spin-off at Ford, an electric vehicle company, and the legacy auto company is separating them in order to try to make this new electric car company different to the way that Ford's run, to make it run more like Tesla. He's even said that himself. Now, this means, said you, that they're able to branch out to new services, bringing out new business models, as exemplified by Amazon, and going through many, many of these moonshot innovations as well. Now, Tesla didn't actually navigate the chip shortage by developing microcontroller units internally. What they actually did was internally reprogram firmware to be compatible with any available microcontroller. So that goes well beyond what people think they did. They internally reprogrammed firmware to be compatible with any available microcontroller. And that is a huge task. Imagine a legacy auto company trying to do that across 30 different models or 70 different models in the case of Volkswagen. Virtually impossible. The one other key thing to consider here is that collectively, legacy auto companies are about $1 trillion in debt and they need to spend hundreds of billions in order to reconstitute themselves and change into an electric vehicle company from ICE vehicle companies. They need to write off billions, tens of billions of dollars worth of production line equipment. That's just the reality. Maybe they can transition by using old factories and repurposing them the way that Tesla re repurposed Toyota and General Motors old factory. But in terms of the skills of their employees being mostly obsolete, in terms of their current production lines, well, those are just going to result in huge losses for Legacy Auto and they have huge challenges to overcome. So do companies like other EV startups to increase production. But clearly Tesla have the fundamental lead in this area. Right now, they're really the only pure electric vehicle company making electric vehicles at scale and clearly positively making them at a profit. We don't actually know if Legacy Auto can make them at a profit, period. But we will discover this at some point in the future and it's gonna be very interesting to find out what happens. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Does Legacy Auto stand a chance against China's EV companies and Tesla over the next decade. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Bye-bye.